Hello guys and welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be learning about grids in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, grids in logo design and grids in Adobe Illustrator. From the last uh, few videos, we learned about the Fibonacci tool. That's the Fibonacci technique rather. And we learned how to create designs using this Fibonacci technique. Okay, and we can see that we even created very cool designs. Okay, like these ones I just opened. Um, you can see these are the designs we created from the last video very unique looking logo marks okay so this can be used as logo marks okay we could give them a meaning or create them with a meaning in mind and then use them as logo marks and do act uh or do serve very perfectly as logo marks so you can see how unique this uh, these designs are so these were created with the help of the fibonacci circles right and um in this video we're going to be creating very really unique uh, designs also or learning how to create uh, unique designs with geometric grids here in adobe illustrator so this video will be more of an introduction to the whole grid thing okay so you know the types of grids we have and how to use them how to uh, the usage techniques basically of these grids okay so i'm going to start by creating a new document and hit ok and as usual shift o to kind of adjust my artboard to what i would want okay i usually do not have a fixed uh, idea of the artboard but i usually just um, have a rough idea of how i want it to look right so that's why i'm not inputting the the details or the dimensions manually i'm just uh, using the artboard to to custom make the artboard look like what i have in mind okay so that's just for me but you can use specific dimensions if you want okay you can put in specific dimensions if you want but i just prefer doing it like this <laughs> okay so um now about the grids what are the types of grids in logo design and how do we use them okay so we have four different kinds of grids we have the rectangular grid we have the uh, the polar grids okay so this is the rectangular grid tool here and we have the polar grids now this polar grid is made of circles you can see it's a bit similar to the fibonacci but i won't say that really because the fibonacci uh, grids are kind of based on proportions right they're based on proportions and there is strict rules when using the fibonacci grids but for this one there is no specific proportion okay it's just made of circles okay and we're going to come to that later on and apart from these two we also have the hexagonal grid and we have the isometric grid the hexagonal grid and the isometric grid so these are the four types of grids we use in logo design and we're going to see how to create each and every one of them okay so how do we start uh how do we start how do we create this grid so let's start with the rectangular grid so there are two ways of creating this grid the first one is to use the rectangular grid tool which is this grid you come and click and then make this 50 50 then maybe put in a dimension if you want and then put in the number of dividers for horizontal and vertical so here we have five but i'm going to make this 10 and 10 and i'm going to hit ok okay we can see how it's created that's because of the skew is 50 okay that's this uh, this value this value is 50 and this value is 50 that's why it's created like this okay but what if we want to create it to like a normal grid so let's hit okay and now we can see after making the skew zero zero we now have a normal grid so this is probably the most easiest way or the easiest way rather to create grids here in adobe illustrator so um so this is the first way okay and we can also create rectangular grids by using the line segment tool okay now this is line segment too so we can create a line segment like this while holding down shift okay we can create the first one or we can use a pen tool if we want and then hold down alt and drag a duplicate to the right hand side and then select the both of them and then use the blend 
uh the blend option here so let's hit the blend option or, or make now we also have the blend tool which is here and we can use this tool to edit our blend options okay or to make our blend so let's just undo what we just did and try using this tool so you can click on the tool and then click on the first one the first line and then come to the second line and click on it now you see that we now have our blend also just like how we had it uh, by using the blend option here so after they are selected like this we can see that we have too many lines and we don't want to use these too many lines okay they are too much and we want to reduce them so we can reduce them in two ways we can select while selecting the shape go to object and pl and blend and then blend options right and then we just make this blend steps and then choose the steps okay but i don't want to use this method because we learned this method in the previous video so what i want to do is i want to use the blend tool so while selecting the object come on double click on the blend tool and you're going to see the blend options come up now you can choose the steps then let's make this 25 and click ok now you can see that now we have 25 lines okay or 25 dividers now uh, we can control c control f to duplicate this guy and simply rotate it so we can rotate it like this and now we have the other dividers now we can then expand go to objects blend and expand objects blend and expand and now we've expanded our blended shapes now we have them as lines okay now we have them as lines and now we can use them uh, as our grids okay now we have our grids here and we can just lock the, the layer and then start creating on a new layer using them as a guide okay so that's basically how you would create grids there are actually other ways of creating grids but i don't want to go into uh, too many other ways these two ways will suffice very perfectly very perfectly we don't need to learn other ways of creating grids so these two ways will be very perfect for your needs okay now you can see how we're using the grids and because we have smart guides on uh, we are now able to to have adobe illustrator guide us while uh, using or while designing on our grids okay so it tells us where we could snap our shape to like points like this okay where we have the lines right so this is the first way to create our grid so i don't want to spend too much time here i'm just going to delete the grids now and then let's work on the second way to create our grids now the second way to create grids would be the polar grid tool okay if you click on the polar grid tool and hold down shift you'll be drawing the perfect circle right okay now i want you to hit the direction buttons on your keyboard the up direction buttons as you can see it's adding the circles it's, it's adding the circles right so if you want one you can just hit down and make it zero or you could just um, hit up to increase the circles okay and you can have some of the line dividers like this by hitting the right arrow key and you could reduce them by hitting the left arrow key okay and apart from that you could actually adjust their positions by hitting x that's the positions of the circles by hitting x and c like this x and c you can also do it for the lines by hitting v and f okay v and f so this is to give you more control in case you would want to use a, a very abnormal <laughs> kind of grid okay okay so that's the way to create your polar grid tool that's the way to create your polar grid tool okay we didn't check the shortcuts when using the rectangular grid tool so for the rectangular grid tool let's say we want to make adjustments while creating the grid just like how we did for the puller right you can hit your up arrow key and you can see that you are increasing the dividers you can hit, hit your right arrow key and you can see that you are increasing the other dividers okay that's the vertical dividers and then uh, for the other 
directional arrow keys will reduce them okay and also okay we could use x for this effect we could use c for the opposite we could use um v for this effect and f for the opposite now these are the skew values these are the skew values okay so messing around with the skew values is what will give us this effect so if i come here and click you can now see that the skew values have been messed with we took them to zero before but now they are 80 and 90 okay so these are how we create these grids in adobe illustrator now the next two grids are the hexagonal grid and the isometric grid now for the hexagonal grid i'm going to show you how to create the hexagonal grid so i'm going to hit uh i'm going to select the line segment tool and then i'm going to create a line segment like this and then i'm going to select it hold down alt and drag a copy to the lower side okay then select the both of them and then go to my blend and make now i want to double click on my blend tool and choose specific steps and let's give this 50 okay so 50 perfect so this is the first step to creating your hexagonal grid okay this is the first step to creating your hexagonal grid the next thing we will do is uh, while selecting this right click and go to transform and go to rotate okay then you have to rotate this by 60 degrees okay 60 degrees and then hit copy do not hit OK, but hit copy. So when you do that, you will have rotated the shape or the lines by 60 degrees, right? Now, while selecting the new one, right click and transform and then reflect. So you reflect this by 90 degrees, okay? And then hit copy. So now we've reflected it by 90 degrees. And what I want you to do right now is just to select each of them and go to object blend and expand select go to object blend and expand select okay i think we we'll have one left yeah this is the one we have left select go to object blend and expand perfect so right now this is what we have and we just want to make a little adjustment now we just want to make sure the lines are like this okay now you can hit ctrl y for the uh, outline mode to see the lines okay so that you can uh, basically arrange them properly so this will do okay this will do and remember i am holding down shift so that uh, we do everything in a straight line okay so you can hit ctrl y to get out of the outline mode and now we have our hexagonal grid okay now the next thing we'll do is to we'll select everything and then come on your pathfinder and hit divide so when you divide it then takes off the the stroke color or the stroke so you just give it a stroke and maybe reduce the stroke size to 0.5 and now we're done now the next thing we will do is um let's go into the group and we will just delete some unneeded parts so let's delete select and delete okay marquee select and delete marquee select and delete marquee select and delete okay so i think we we'll just work with this now we can centralize this or align it to the middle now this is what we have this is our hexagonal grid and uh let me just make a little demonstration with this okay let's see if we want to create a logo design or a logo mark so um this will also work with all the other grids the very easiest way to start creating stuff right away with this is to select the grid and then go to your shape builder tool click on your shape builder tool select the color and then start creating start just start creating okay okay as you can see this is what we just created so this is just a demonstration and we won't want to use a grid this big we can hit a for the direct selection to select the guy 
control x to cut and come here and control v to paste now you can see that we have now created a logo mark simple as it may seem but yeah it's a logo mark okay now we can remove the stroke and this is a logo mark we're going to create cool stuff with all of these okay so but this is just for demonstration purposes and we're also going to look at some examples of of uh, logos created with some of these grid types okay so that you get the point you get the idea and you start to visualize things in your head of how these grids might be useful in your work as logo designers now for the last type of grid i'm just going to delete this one but the last type of grid we want to create is the isometric grid we're going to create the isometric grid so select your line segment tool create a line segment this time you're going to create it in this manner like this okay not the way we did uh, that one okay so you're going to create them vertically like this pull on alt and drag it to the right hand side and then um select your shape uh, sorry your blend tool and then click and click and then double click choose specific steps make this 50 perfect the next thing we'll do is select right click transform and rotate we also rotate it by 60 degrees and we hit copy and then right click transform reflect reflect by 90 degrees and hit copy perfect now we are done with the major work now we just need to expand all of these blended shapes so objects blend expand objects blend expand <coughs> and finally object blend and expand perfect now for the last thing we will need to do is we will need to just um, align this guy just like how we did the others or, or the last grid okay so you can hit y control y rather for for the outline mode and just try to align everything perfectly perfect now control y to get back to get out of the outline mode select everything here and come to your pathfinder and divide now everything is divided and let's just give it a stroke and give it a stroke width of 0.5 and go into the the group then select the unneeded parts and delete them just like this and like this sorry i mistakenly went out of the group so i actually think we can work with this so let's just work with this perfect now this is our hexagonal grid and this is our isometric grid and we're going to see how to work with all of these grids okay so um we've looked at all the four types of grids now we're going to take a look at some examples of logo designs created with these grids okay and then we are going to see how we can use these grids to create logo marks here in adobe illustrator okay now i'm just going to go on my browser go to pinterest i think i'm in pinterest right now so here i'm going to search um uh, grid grid based sorry logo design perfect now you can see some of the logo designs okay we can see this one they used the isometric grid sorry sorry not the isometric grid the rectangular grid and also the polar grids okay so you can see the rectangular grids and the polar grids now the polar grids are these circles here so it will probably be um 
the Fibonacci circles or just normal polar grids okay so uh, this is and this is one of the examples we have this example also we have this example and this is NASA and we have the polar grids and probably the rectangular grids also used okay and there are quite a number of examples um i think instead of searching just grid based designs i will search hexagonal hexagonal grid based logo design so that we see some of them okay so like for hexagonal grids these are some valid examples okay these are some valid examples of hexagonal grid based logo designs okay so this one is for isometric grid this is an isometric grid based logo design okay so they look quite similar that hexagonal and isometric so you can see some of them you can see some of them the isometric grid based logo designs look somewhat like 3d designs okay it looks somewhat like 3d designs and we're going to see how we create all of these in a short while okay perfect now we have this one which is the polar grids and also the rectangular grid tool we have this one which is probably a fibonacci based logo design okay this is probably fibonacci based logo design and the rectangular grid okay So there are quite a number of examples there are quite countless examples here online so we have some very perfect examples of hexagonal logos here so we have a number of them okay so that you get the point and you can keep checking on your own you can keep checking on your own okay perfect so guys these are the examples we are going to be looking at and um right now i'll just go back to adobe illustrator and we're going to see some usage techniques okay so some of these grids are too large too large i will just um delete some some of the parts here so that we have smaller grids okay let delete okay so let's see for this one still be I will delete some more perfect so this is the hexagonal grid so i'll just show you some examples so while selecting the guy shift m for the shape builder tool click and select the color and just start building Okay, let me undo. So it's also very possible to combine multiple grids, just like we saw, of course, just like we saw in some of these examples here. Okay, so a lot of these examples have combined grids. Okay, so it's also possible to combine grids. So it doesn't just have to be one type of grid. On this okay guys so this is an example not the perfect example but to suffice i think i should have just um 
I think I should have just duplicated this grid first. So bring it to the left hand side and um, okay now we can work with this one since we have a duplicate here okay so what should I create shift M what should I create uh, let's see so in the next video we are actually going to work on some real logo uh, logo files okay or logo designs rather some real logo designs we're going to work on some real logo designs using these grids So we could have a background, maybe you white, arrange and send to back. Perfect. So we could have this as a logo mark. Remember, I am not really creating anything in specific, so it's not perfect. Okay, but we have this as a logo mark that's very easily created using the hexagonal grid. Okay. Perfect. Now we could have some other one. Maybe okay, let's try creating L. Sorry, I didn't select the color. Let's see. Let's try creating L. Okay. Let's try creating O like this. So creating V. <laughs> and let's try creating E. So let's see for E. Ah no. Oh. So okay, we could actually make E look like this. Feeling it. Sorry. So, guys, whatever it is, <laughs> I'm not really getting it here. So, um, maybe we just end it with something like this, okay? And we could also have them with different shades. We could also have them with different shades. Ctrl G to group them with it. And just uh, maybe have. Sorry. Okay, this would do. So this doesn't make much sense, but we can see how unique, how unique the logo mark looks. Okay, so if we really get to create something with meaning or really get to give this a good meaning we will see that we are coming up with very unique logo designs okay very unique logo designs in fact using grids is one of the the very unique ways of achieving good logo design absolutely Okay, so this could suffice also. Control X, Control V, Control G to group, and I, and sample the color. 
maybe we delete this one and see how this one works this could be the logo mark very simple we could rotate it okay so if we rotated it um let me hit ctrl r for the uh, ruler tool so i can uh, draw out a guide here so i want to rotate this to align with this line beneath or below okay perfect so guys now you can see that this could serve as a t and as unique as it looks it could serve as a logo mark okay it could serve as logo mark so that's how we create uh, logos with with these grids okay so let me just try out some examples with the okay sorry with the what do we call it um the isometric grid let me just get it the main one instead so i'm just going to delete some of the ones we have here perfect so for this one I'll expand it centralize it and see maybe i'll just delete some more oh sorry going to the ship delete some more perfect so let's centralize and uh, duplicate and start seeing what we can achieve with this now for the isometric grid we can actually create 3d isometric designs with this so let me start with a very simple example so right away you can see that i've been able to achieve this 3d look okay sorry i pasted it in place so right away we can see that i've been able to achieve this 3d look just by selecting different shades of this color different shades of this color so this could be a logo also uh, we could use this to create logos as well so instead of using it this way we can still use it as a 2d uh logo design grid to create 2d logo designs okay or, or 2d logo marks so we could have something like this and as you can see um okay i think i didn't do it well let me just select the color and Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to create something totally different but never mind this will still work it will still work so this could be a logo mark okay this could be a logo mark and let's see if a different shade of this will work well so you see guys this could be a logo mark absolutely So this is more of a 2D plus 3D kind of thing. So it's not totally 2D because we have here a 2D and then here the shade in here now makes it look like 3D and also here. Okay, so we can have all sorts of things, all sorts of designs, guys, with this uh, technique or with these grids. Okay, so the limitation to this is just your imagination okay and in the next video we're going to be creating some logo marks some interesting logo marks with these uh, grids with these grids so i can control g to group and then bring it over my white background to see how it looks maybe i will just uh, duplicate and bring it to the middle to see how it looks so guys at the end of it all this looks uh very unique okay looks very unique to me so this is a very interesting logo mark <coughs> 
so that'll be it for this one guys we can see some of the very unique logo marks we've created in fact i think i know of a company whose logo is almost like this okay i can't just recall the name of that company but the, their logo is almost like this so we can see how we, we created their logo within the tinkle of an eye in fact by mystic okay this is creation by mystic because we didn't even uh, plan to create their logo but we just achieved it and it looked perfect so that's the power of grids for you so in the next video we're going to be creating a couple of logo marks using these grids and using the techniques we've learned in this video okay so that'll be it for this one and see you in the next one Hey, so that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. We post new videos every week covering topics in the fields of graphic design and illustration, motion graphics and video, branding and more. If you want to support us and get access to exclusive benefits such as the project files we use in our classes, a live chat with us, shoutouts and more, consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You can join for as little as $3 a month and the link to our Patreon page is in the description below. And if you want to take your learning to the next level, you can check out the complete course of which this episode is a part of. And in the complete course, you get access to more than 10 hours of video lessons, project files and resources class exercises, a Q&A section, a certificate of completion, and more. You can get the course for a special discount by using the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.